Hello, my name is Empty Without Brain. Dear God, Sean, have you been smoking more of that Jesus juice Kent Hovind sent you through the post again, or have you just genuinely gone out of your goddamn little mind? In this video, I will be presenting the latest from a dialogue Michelle had with Sean regarding some aspects of God and morality. In her personal message, she asked, I came across the part about Moses in the Bible killing 3,000 people because he was commanded by God. I must say I would be unsure as to how to respond to a request like that. However, I would love to hear what you would do if you were requested by God to kill someone. I know since Jesus died for our sins, God has not commanded anyone to kill. However, considering the hypothetical, what would you do if you were Moses in that situation? He answers by saying, I do anything, God says, without hesitation, I hope. For confirmation, she asks for reasons. But how would you feel? Surely you would want a justified explanation to the request. And would you kill someone you cared for, for example a friend or a family member, if you were commanded by God to kill without any explanation or justification? He answers by saying, My feelings would be irrelevant, and God does not need to justify himself to me, yes and yes. Michelle then goes on to create a valid comparison between Moses and a schizophrenic, and asks how Sean would be able to identify the differences between a person who has been commanded by God to kill and a schizophrenic. He answers by saying, I might not be able to tell and ultimately it doesn't matter. Either it was from God or it wasn't. If it was, then there was a good reason. If there wasn't, then it was just an outworking of a fallen world in which we live in. Ultimately, we know God is in control, so no matter what happens, we can trust that all things are working together for good, for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Michelle then asks how he would feel if someone were to kill a family member or himself and portray themselves as someone who was commanded by God to do so. However, he answers by saying that it would depend whether he knew God had commanded them to do it or not. Michelle repeated back to a previous point he had made. But Sean responds by claiming how God is not in control of an evil person's actions. Michelle gives an example of how God had manipulated the Pharaoh's actions to portray God's wrath. So in return, if Sean and his parents were to be killed, then it would be under the will of God, whether the person or persons were commanded or not. He responds to Michelle's point about the Pharaoh by portraying how God was only indirectly in control of his actions. In a nutshell, I think Sean did come to the conclusion that God was responsible for his actions because he explains how he manipulated the events and circumstances so he would become evil. He then concedes the fact that it would be just. Just think about that for a moment. He would be completely fine with God commanding somebody to kill him and his parents without a valid reason, along with the fact that he would be willing to kill if he were ever under the illusion that God had commanded him. This demonstrates the potential danger Sean can be, considering how he would be willing to kill somebody for no reason or justification if he was ever under the illusion that God had commanded him to kill someone he would consider it moral. I'm a man of my word. Could you imagine if you were to take the role of a pastor or any position of significant influence where he would portray this as a moral standard and consider it acceptable? It's completely batshit crazy. Sean, if this type of morality were to be governed by any civilized society, then it would be its downfall. Your videos have only demonstrated the most abundantly brainless form of influence imaginable. They are so simplistic and redundant, I don't think there is a measurable unit to identify how pointless they are. If anyone has any dignity or any brain cells left in their skull, 
they would just cringe with disbelief. The only tools you have used in your arguments are deflective and emotive language, where you prey on the weaknesses of a person's insecurity and vulnerability. These are the tools of a trickster, con man, a scam artist. This is why you have people like myself call you out on your bullshit. So your attempts to catch people on your hook amount to nothing. The three elements of proof you need for persuasion are gone. Your character, your relation to the audience, and I think you quite happily got rid of the logical parts for us a long time ago. You have just substituted one addiction for another. You are not a messenger of God, Sean. You are just a sad, lonely little boy and a complete and utter failure.